I'm Tom Cheatham. I'm a family physician, and I want to tell you about a case today. This is a real case, and we'll call this gentleman Bill. Bill had a profound intellectual disability, and the cause of that, the etiology, was being born prematurely at 28 weeks gestation, when the normal is 40 weeks. He was blind and deaf, had no verbal communication, could be really quite aggressive both to his peers and to his carers. He also could be self-injurious. And the case starts with Bill's primary care provider being asked to see him because something's wrong. The history was that Bill felt warm several days previously. And at that time, his temperature was taken. It was 104 degrees Fahrenheit. About four hours later, his temperature was normal and there was no treatment. So that four hours of fever just went away. And since that time, he had had no further fever. He had had no other signs or symptoms of signs of illness, no cough or runny nose or shortness of breath, dyspnea, no vomiting, diarrhea, change in his urination, his appetite was normal for him. But the direct support professional was sure there was something wrong. He wasn't right. Physical examination requires cooperation and uh, particularly um, for chest examination, the person needs to take deep breaths through their open mouth and remain still, or all you hear is scratching noises through the stethoscope. Bill didn't like to be touched, so physical examination was very limited. While he was being fed a favorite food by his favorite direct support professional, um, he was examined. But he wasn't relaxed or still, he wouldn't take deep breaths, so a very limited examination. But there was nothing obvious. So the plan was to just observe. This is not unusual in primary care. We'll rule out a serious immediate problem and then use time as part of our diagnostic process to see what new signs or symptoms develop. But the direct support professional was sure there was something wrong. This wasn't good enough for her. So a few days later, the PCP relented and ordered a number of tests, including uh, blood count, uh, tests for diabetes, for, for kidney function, um, uh, urine tests, and so on. And secretly, the PCP was gloating a little bit, but didn't tell the direct support professional that clearly she was wrong. All those results were normal. In particular, there was no leukocytosis, no elevated white blood cells, which would indicate some infection. And it had no fever, no signs of illness, and it had been now about two and a half weeks since that transient four-hour fever. didn't convince her, she was still sure there was something wrong. Every day she saw the PCP who actually got tired of seeing her and said, all right, this is enough. There was no mobile x-ray. The PCP was concerned about the amount of sedation Bill required to get uh, some x-rays done, but without it, uh, they, they wouldn't give any useful information. And so when Bill had a chest x-ray, it came back and showed extensive pneumonia in both lungs. To this day, and that was many years ago, I can't tell this story without getting a little choked up because I was that PCP and had it not been for that direct support professional, he would have died. Bill would have died. And she was right. It didn't matter that the labs and everything pointed to him being well. She knew Bill and she didn't give up. How hard was that for her to keep 
saying to the physician, you're wrong. I don't care what your tests show. There's something wrong with this man. I think this is a really important case because it says to you, direct support professionals and family members, don't give up. Don't give up. You know, you too may save someone's life. Because looking after people as a physician, people who have intellectual and developmental disabilities can be quite unlike looking after people without disabilities. The rules don't always apply. And if you're a physician or nurse colleague, we know we typically with children, we pay attention to what families, what parents say, but we know they're not always right. But if your patient has an intellectual or developmental disability, just pause a little longer before you dismiss what someone who knows that person well has to say. I think this is a really important case, um, and that's why one of the first questions I ask in any encounter if someone's accompanying the person, how well do you know them? Remember the case. Thank you.